fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. One Silver, there's danger on the trail ahead. Oh, Silver! Boy! Lone Ranger and Tonto were galloping along the mountain trail when suddenly the keen eyes of the masked man saw a prone figure on the ground. Whoa, whoa, sir, whoa, 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 whoa. There on the edge of the trail. Uh, man lying ground. He's dead, Tonto. Bullet through his heart. Uh, he must have been on horseback, but where? Maybe he shot scare horse. Him run away. You know this man, Tonto? Have you ever seen him before? No, Tonto not know him. I wonder who he is and why this happened. Him outlaw? No, I don't think so. He's not... Look, a badge pinned to his vest. Oh. I know this man was a United States deputy marshal. You know name? Wait, there are papers in his pocket. Uh, what papers say? It's a letter. Listen, it says, Sheriff Fred Boone, Redstone, dear sir... This will serve to introduce United States Deputy Marshal John Evans. I'm sending him to your territory because this office has received numerous reports concerning the criminal and lawless elements in Redstone. Trust you will give Mr. Evans every cooperation, and I'm sure he will be very helpful to you. Sincerely yours. Signed by the United States Marshal. Mm, somebody no lawman come shoot first. I'm going to keep this letter. We'll stop at the county seat and report the murder. Yes, Silver. How far away is Redstone, Tonto? Uh, Redstone, plenty far. Heap big mountain. Yes, I know. It's across the divide, up in the gold mining country. Ah. That's where we're heading, Tonto. We're going to see Sheriff Fred Boone. First, we'll take this man to the county seat. Let um, me get him on scout. Yeah. Um, he got him. Good. Steady, Silver. Get him on scout. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the county seat and left the body of the deputy marshal. And they rode steadily north for three days. Each night they made camp to rest for a few hours. But there were many miles to go, and the first light of the rising sun always found them in the saddle again. In the late afternoon of the fourth day, they left the rolling plains behind them and stopped for a moment at a cross trail. Whoa, horse, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, This is where we head west, Tonto. Uh, mountain trail, plenty bad. It's the only way to reach Redstone. Come on, Silver, get him up. Come on. they picked their way along a rocky trail that zigzagged through deep ravines and clung to the face of mountains hundreds of feet high, the man they were seeking, Sheriff Fred Boone, was having dinner with Jim Wallace, owner of the Golden Hair Mine. 
course, it's none of my business, Jim, but I think you'd be smart to sell the golden hair. It's played out. I don't want to sell it, Sheriff. Won't you have some more to eat, Mr. Boone? Well, thank you, Nancy. I've had enough. Mighty good vittles, too. Lots of folks think I ought to sell the golden hair, but I'm not going to do it. Jim, I'm a friend of yours, so I'm going to speak right out. You're an old man. There's no sense of holding on to a mine with no gold in it. Where do you want me to sell? For your own good and for your daughter. Now, why should she have to? I don't understand how I feel, Sheriff. I made that strike 20 years ago when Nancy here was just a little tyke and her mother was... was still alive. We named it after her. Golden hair. I know. And you took out a lot of pay dirt. Enough to build the only stamping mill within 100 miles. But now it's played out, so what do you, Nancy, got? The stamping mill is something... Oh, what good's a mill without ore to feed it? I know how Pa feels, Mr. Boone. The golden hair and the mill, well, they're part of us. Well, suit yourself. I understand Bart McKee made you a good offer. He did. Boy, it figures if he owned the mill, he could pack it over to that new mine he's working the other side of the ridge. Well, if he's offering a good price, you're crazy not to let him have it. Why? Well, I've got my own good reasons. But there's no sense in talking to a stubborn old coot like you. Uh, come here, Sheriff. Maybe this will help you understand what I mean. Listen. Listen to what? You hear that waterfall? It's the overflow from the flume up in the mine. Well, what about it? I built that flume and the mill. And I dug the mine, too. I haven't been up there for almost two years now. But sometimes at night I sit here and listen to that water and it seems like I can hear the stampin' mill going full blast. Just like it used to be. Jim, you're really loco. Yeah, maybe. Well, I've got to be getting back to town. Thank you for the dinner, Miss Nancy. You're welcome, Sheriff. Who's this? Bart McKee. Evening, Miss Nancy. Howdy, Jim. Sheriff. Oh, hello, Bart. Kind of off your range, ain't you? I just rode over to see if Jim changed his mind about the golden hair. No, Bert, I don't want to sell. That sounds pretty definite. Hey, Jim's stubborn, Bart. You can't budge him. No harm in trying. Well, I've got a mosey on. Hey, boy. Well, thanks again for the dinner, Nancy. Oh, wait, Sheriff. I'll ride along with you. At least till the trail branches over the ridge. Hey, come on, then. You ain't going to get any place arguing with Jim Wallace. Is that right, Jim? The mine's not for sale. Well, that's it. By the way, Sheriff, I, I got some news for you. Yeah? One of the boys driving the stage says there's a couple of outlaws headed this way. Man wearing a mask and an engine traveling with him. Yeah, let him come. These ordinary outlaws will be different from the sneaking high graders we have around these parts. You figure there's some high grading going on, Sheriff? Yep. Who's doing it? Yeah, I don't know. Come on, you riding? Yeah, yeah, I'll go a piece with you. Hey, good night, Jim and Nancy. Good night, good Sheriff. Night. Yeah, get up there, boy. Get up there, boy. I dislike that Bart McKee more every time I see him. Oh, I guess he's all right. Just ambitious. I don't see how the sheriff can be so friendly with him. Nancy, I'm going to walk up to the mine. Why, Pa, you can't go up there now. It's too dark. Well, it ain't late. Besides, the moon makes it as bright as day. You haven't tried to climb that far in years. Hey, I... I'm kind of lonesome tonight, Nancy. Guess that's why I want to go up you don't mind, do you, child? You mean... No, of course I don't mind, Pa. But be careful. I'll be all right. Don't wait up for me, Nancy. The trail to the Golden Hair Mine was steep, and climbing with legs that were no longer young forced Jim to stop many times and rest. Finally, he could see the mine. He stopped and his heart swelled with pride. This was his, the golden hair, and no one would ever take it from him. The roar of the flume's waterfall was almost deafening. But suddenly he detected another sound, a sound he could hardly believe. Well, it's, it's a stampin' mill, running wide open. He ran as fast as he could to the doorway of the mill. Well, it's, it's you. Uh, hi, Crater. That's what you are. I never thought that you would be that. morning, Sheriff Fred Boone was seated in his office when the door opened suddenly. Are you Fred Boone, the sheriff? A mask man and an engine. If you're the sheriff, I have a letter for you. I'm Sheriff Boone. Who are you? You want to see the letter? You give it to me. Hmm. So you're John Evans, deputy marshal, huh? John Evans is dead. 
Shot from ambush on the trail many miles east of here. How do you know? My Indian friend and I found him. We reported the murder, then rode on here to help. You don't expect me to believe that, do you? Well, that's up to you. You come in here wearing a mask and tell me a man's been murdered. Well, if he was killed, you and this engine most likely did it. You are having trouble here in Redstone. Well, there's a lot of high grading going on. But I don't need any crooks to help me catch the armbraces braces doing it. Well, we're not crooks. We came to help you. All right, if you're so peaceable, shuck those guns you're packing. Throw them on the table. If that will prove that we're sincere, I'd gladly do it. Good. Now, reach for the ceiling, both of you. Took a little unfair advantage, didn't you, Sheriff? I ain't taking any chances with that, blows. Keep your hands up. I've got a nice jail on the second floor of this building. It'll just fit you two. Sheriff Booner! Oh. Now, don't get scared, Nancy. I'm just holding a bead on a couple of would-be outlaws. Sheriff Boone, Pa's been killed. What? Last night at the Golden Hair Mine. Well, I... Oh, wait a minute, Nancy. Wait till I heard these two mavericks upstairs and lock them up. Who are they? I don't know. Might have been them that shot your pa. We'll find out now. Get going, you hombres, up them stairs. Come along, Otto. Ah. And remember, I'm right behind you with a forty-five. Get going now. That's right. All right, now. Wait till I get this door unlocked. All right, inside, both of you. Uh, that'll hold you. Norman, think we crooks? Yeah, this isn't exactly what I expected. Well, Nancy, <laughs> tell me all about it. There, there's nothing to tell. I just found him there this morning. Tell me, Nancy. How did your pa happen to go to the mine? It, it was right after you and Bart McKee left last night. Pa, pa said he was kind of lonesome, and I, I know I likes the old mine, so I, I told him to go. And he was killed up there. I can't figure it out. Got your horse outside? Yes. Well, come on. You and I'll go there and look around. Where did you find him? In the stamping mill. I'll show you. One of the boys from the next claim helped me carry Pa's body down to the cabin this morning, but here's where I found him. Right here. Yeah, he must have been coming through the door, and he was shot from over there. Why? Who would want to kill him? Well, I don't know, Nancy. Maybe those two critters I've got locked up. How long since this mill's been used? Two years. Not since we stopped working the mine. Mm. No signs of a struggle around here. You must have... Wait, what's this in the floor? Dirt, I guess. It's been so long since... This ain't dirt. Look. A nugget. Gold, all right, but not a nugget. It's a cufflink. But how? Did you ever see this before? Did it belong to your pa? No, I, I'm i sure it didn't. Then maybe at last I'm on the trail or something. What do you mean? Oh, I might be wrong. Nancy, you go down to your cabin and wait for me. I'm riding back to Redstone. Is it that masked man you put in jail? No, I think I made a mistake. But it's not too late to ask for his help. Wait for me at the cabin. <laughs> I know in some way the killing of that girl's father is connected with the murder of John Evans. Ah. We can't do much about it as long as we're locked up in here. Lawman, not like us. And he comes back, we'll move fast. You understand? Ah. Somebody's coming. The stranger. I want to talk to you. Good. If you unlock this door, I'll... You see, I've sort of changed my mind. Well, talking would only waste time, Sheriff. It's better this way. Oh. I hated to do that, but we've got to hurry. Quick, downstairs. Get my guns, Tonto. Tonto, get them. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Tonto. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. I don't know where that mine is, but we've got to find it. Uh -huh. Come on, Silver! Hit him up, Scout! Hit him up! Oh, Silver! Hi! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto escaped from the Redstone Jail, they headed directly north, up a winding mountain trail. Meanwhile, the sheriff had recovered from the Lone Ranger's blow, and with lips grimly set, he walked to the mining office of Bart McKee and his partner, Ed Craven. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Hello, Bart. Morning, and sit down. I figured it would. I'm my partner, Ed Craven. Ed, this is Sheriff Boone. Hi. Yes, I think I know Craven, by sight at least. What's on your mind, Sheriff? Well, lots of things. Principally this. Hmm, what is it? Exactly what it looks like, Bart. Gold cufflink. Pretty, ain't it? Ever see it before? Me? No, can't say I have. Why? Because I know you have. This is one of a pair of cufflinks, Bart. A pair that you wear all the time. The mate to it is in your shirt cuff right now. What? There must be some mistake. No mistake, Bert. The proof is right here before us. Uh, I must have lost it someplace. Um, where'd you find it? On the floor of the stamping mill at the Golden Hair Mine. On the floor of the... Oh, now that's impossible. Oh, no, it isn't. Because you were there last night. You were there when Jim Wallace was killed. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. I was with you last night. For a few minutes, then you took a side trail. So that's proof that I was at Wallace's mine when he was shot? How'd you know he was shot? You just told me. Oh, no, I didn't. I said he was killed. I didn't mention shooting. Well, that doesn't prove anything. Hmm. Well, some other things do. For instance, you told me last night that the stage driver mentioned two outlaws. A masked man and an engine. Well? Well, there hasn't been a stage into Redstone for the last three days. A deputy United States Marshal was murdered. And the man who shot him might have seen this masked man the engine. What's this all about? About you, Bart. And the high grading you've been doing around here. That's a lie. I figured something was wrong when that little mine of yours on the ridge kept turning out so much pay dirt. Is that why you wanted to buy the golden hair? Because you'd already been tapping it? Well, I don't have to take it. You that. were there last night. Jim Wallace caught you, so you killed him. I'm not going to Yes, you better come with me, Bart. You're under arrest. Why don't you... reach for it. I've got you covered. Let him have it, Ed. Very smart for a sheriff to only cover one of us. You drill him? Nah, I just grazed his skull. But I can finish the job if you like. Not here. Tie him up. Take him with us tonight and get rid of him up there. Mill? Where else? But after that blow-up last night. He's safer than ever. Get the pack mules, load them into one of the sacks, and meet me at the old entrance just after dark. Why don't you come with me? I'll get the boiler started up in the mill so we can run the ore through. How's this stuff we're taking out test? About four dollars to the pound in gold. Ah, that's plenty high. We ought to make a killing. We will. Now, don't forget. Pack the mules and meet me there just after sundown. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the winding mountain trail through a maze of little-used passes and small hidden valleys. They had but a general idea of the cabin where Nancy Wallace lived. Finally, they pulled their horses to a stop at the summit of the mountain, where they could see for miles across the broad valley before them. The rays of the setting sun fell on a small cabin, almost hidden in the foothills of the next range. And a little beyond the cabin, they could see what appeared to be the remains of an old mine... The masked man and his Indian friend urged their horses on at breakneck speed until when it was almost dark. Oh, Silver, pull, 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 big fella. I think this is the place, Tonto. Uh, the only cabin in this section. Who do you... Oh, the outlaws. We're not outlaws. We're here to help you. Help me? That's right. Did Sheriff Boone send you? Well, in a way, yes, he did. And I guess it's all right, because he said he was going to talk to you. The sheriff didn't have much time to talk. He told me to wait for him. Do you uh, mind answering a few questions? What are they? Your father was killed last night. Yes, he was shot. Where did it happen? At the mine, the Golden Hair. It's about a mile from here. May we uh, go up there? If you like, I'll go with you. That will be much better. Then follow me. Leaving the humble cabin, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the girl up a path overgrown with weeds and underbrush. The trail showed evidence of much use in years past, but now the branches of the trees met overhead and the birds sang undisturbed. The Lone Ranger understood the pride that Nancy's father had taken in the old mine, and he realized how the old man must have felt when the last load of pay dirt had been removed. Suddenly, the sound of a waterfall was heard, and it was then that Nancy spoke. This is it, the golden hair. It hasn't been worked for years. There's the main shaft over there, but I think it's covered now. And the waterfall? That's the overflow from the flume. I see. 
Which building was it that your father... This one was... right here. The stamping mill. Now, let's go inside. I don't know whether you've ever seen a stamping mill like this. That machine over there crushes the ore. And water is cut in from the flume and the crushed ore is washed under copper plates. Yes, that's what happens. How long has this machinery been idle? Two or three years. That's the reason everything's so rusty. All but these crushes on the stamping machine. They're not rusted. In fact, they might have been used as recently as yesterday. I don't understand. You've heard of high graders, haven't you? But that's what the sheriff spoke oh. about. And he's on the right trail. The same trail your father found. That's why he was killed. How can we prove anything like that? There's only one way to do it. Go down into the mine and find out for ourselves. Can you operate the hoist? Well, it needs steam. Not to let it down. Tunnel and I'll go. Now you stay here and fire the boiler. Then when we signal, you can raise us. I can do that, all right. And we'll need lanterns. There, on the wall. Uh, here, Tano, we'll carry them until we get below ground. Uh. Come on, let's hurry. We might have visitors. You mean whoever was here last night? Well, they may come back. Then how can we... Now get a fire started in that boiler, so you can bring us up on short notice. I understand. Now here, this is the shaft. You'll have to move that wooden cover, and I'm afraid the railing around it is so now weak... We'll watch out for it. Lift, Tano. Uh, we got it. We can only move it far enough to... There. Now, Tano, we'll climb in that big bucket and hang on. Uh. How to do like you. I'm in. I'll hold the lantern. Uh, hey, get in there. Room enough for two of us? Uh. Uh. Now, Nancy, go back to the engine house and let us down. Well, where shall I stop it? There are three levels. Which was the newest when the mine closed? The lower. Now, let us down there. I'll wait for your signal. All right. Let's go. into the shaft went the bucket, with the Lone Ranger and Tonto peering through the dim light in search of evidence that would prove that someone had been in the mine recently. Past the first level they went, and past the second, where they could just make out the shadows of the wood piling now slowly rotting. As Nancy operated the winch that slowly paid out the line, the masked man and his Indian friend reached the third level. But here there was no light at all. Then the bucket hit the ground with a resounding thud. This is the bottom. Come on, Tonto. Back in my... Yeah, we light the lanterns. Here. Yeah, that's better. Uh, which way we go? We'll have to guess. Come on, Kumasabi. The Lone Ranger and Tonto spent the next two hours walking through a labyrinth of underground passages. Their sense of direction was naturally distorted, so they weren't surprised to find they had completed a circle in the deserted mine and were almost back to the base of the main shaft. Suddenly, as they came around a sharp corner... Tonto, look. This is the evidence we've been looking for. Tonto will not know what you mean. See? The side of this drift. It's all freshly mined. Oh. This must be the place the high graders are working. Tonto will not savvy high grader. Now, it's a term that miners use for crooks who steal ore from a mine they pretend is worthless. Oh. How they get ore, nobody see them. That's a mystery in this case. They aren't using the main shaft. They stamp gold in big machine? Yes. They're using the stamping mill, but I can't understand how they get the ore up there. Maybe we... Tonto, did you blow out the lantern? No. Tonto not do it. Big wind. There's a draft in here. That means a horizontal tunnel someplace. Come on. We'll signal Nancy and go up. Here's a signal rope, but... Listen... It sounded like Nancy. Uh, we must get up there somehow. How we get up? Come on, we'll follow that tunnel where your lantern was blown up. Meanwhile, back at the stamping mill, Bart McKee and his partner Ed had sneaked up on Nancy as she was lighting the boiler under orders from the Lone Ranger. She tried to warn the two men in the mine, but the bullets from Ed's gun served as a warning to stay where she was. The two outlaws had brought the sheriff with them. He was still weak from his gunshot wound, and he was tightly bound hand and foot. Ed quickly bound Nancy in a similar manner and then shouted to his partner. What do you say, Bart? I got them both tied up. Put the sheriff in first. How about the girl? Let her watch those hammers work him over. You give her an idea of what to expect. Come on, sheriff. You'll have to walk. I'm not going to carry you. You will get away with this. What does it look like we're doing now? Come on, get moving. If you think you can... I'll try any of them tricks, sheriff. I'll plug you before the machine gets a chance to start working. No, man! I'm trying to, but... It... Oh, no! Wait a minute. Wait. I'll turn off the machine. You slip them in, and I'll start it up again. Now you ought to be able to get them in there. It's so heavy, I... 
Get. Get calm on her. I'll... Drop your hands, both of you. The outlaw. Oh, my wrist. Put up your hands. Your wrist is all right. I just shot the gun out of your hand. You'll never get a chance to try that fancy shooting on me. Quick, fellow. He's gone out another door. Circle to the left. I'll go this way. Cut him off, Toto. He's heading for the mine. Get a rail around that shaft and you'll... I'll show you. <laughs> oh, him walk backward. Fall. There's nothing we can do now. Come along, Toto. You've got to release Nancy and the sheriff and take care of one prisoner. following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto stopped in front of Sheriff Boone's office where Nancy was waiting for them. The sheriff tells me that you and your friend are leaving Redstone. Is that true? We've accomplished what we came here to do. There's no reason to stay any longer. But how can we ever thank you or repay you for what you've done? If we've helped you, we've been more than well paid. But I don't even know your name. Well, it's better that you don't. I... I'd like to remember something. Now you can remember by always helping someone else. Adios. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. Oh, Silver. Boy. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.